What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're heading into the final two races of F1 Manager 23 and of the 2027 season looking to try and finish on as high a point as possible with <laughs> the situation we find ourselves in. If you missed out on the last episode we raced in Brazil and we had obviously the sprint race where we finished in fourth and eighth a good drive from Fio, who qualified quite high as well, and Gasly managed to recover from a poor qualifying session to finish in the points. In the race, Fio made a bit of a tragic mistake and DNF'd, as well as Max actually DNFing, which was a bit of a surprise, because we haven't seen that for a while. And then Pierre actually managed to get himself into the top four. So we had a great day in Brazil, great weekend overall in Brazil, Except for, obviously, Fio's little uh, mistake in the race. And it's brought some questions about as to what we should do in regards to Fio's position. And while I want to give Fio the benefit of the doubt, and I want to give Fio as much time as possible, I think for the future of the team, I don't think it makes sense to keep Fio on when he's making as many mistakes we can't forget the summer of mistakes that we had up and across up and down the team across the board there were mistakes made left right and center i made mistakes the drivers made mistakes and the pit stop crew made mistakes as well so with that being said i think the right move is to try and bring in a bit more experience bring in somebody that can maybe help us next season and try and push us on and I want to try and make our team as strong as possible, similar to what we had when we had Pierre and Ocon racing in the team last year, and obviously the, the couple of seasons prior to that. And Pierre has got rid of his mistakes, and we haven't really seen him make many mistakes since that turbulent summer, as I'm, as I'm coining it. So we're going to be looking into the driver market at the end of the season and seeing what we can do. It may well be a case that we can't get anyone in. And if that is the case, then we'll just have to leave it be. In terms of the last thing I need to give you an update on before we get into qualifying, we had, um, obviously, an issue with the cost cap. We are now bang on. We have no cost cap remaining. We are going to go over by close to a million. If we don't replace any components between now and the end of the season, then we'll be just under a million over the cost cap. I think last season we went over 600,000 over the cost cap. So it wasn't really a big, massive spend. But I think essentially what ends up happening with the game is essentially you get charged however much you go over the cost cap. So at the moment, it's going to be close to a million. And we have plenty of money in the bank to be able to cover that off. We also have put an upgrade in for the CFD simulator, which should be done close to the beginning of 2028 and the factory will be done in time for that 2028 season beginning as well so hopefully when we put upgrades in for next year we'll start to see all sorts of benefits from that and i think now we are at a point in terms of our facilities and upgrades that we've made over the past couple of seasons where we maybe aren't necessarily the biggest team but we can start to fight with the bigger teams on the grid on a more consistent basis. And I think the past couple of seasons, we really have been punching above our weight. So, with that being said, and with that big waffle going on, we're going to get into qualifying for Las Vegas. I do want to apologize for today's episode because I am going to sound a little bit bunged up. Hay fever has massively hit me over the past couple of days. So, I might not sound as alive as I usually do. But I am still going to try and put the best video I can together for you guys. So let's get into qualifying and let's see how we do in Vegas. So I thought we might struggle this weekend because of Theo running a lower spec part on his car. And Pierre's gearbox not looking too healthy at the moment. But we've put in two mega quality laps and finished in second and fifth in qualifying. And another wrinkle to this race is Charles is only is still within touching distance of Max, and Max is going to have a grid penalty. So unless Max makes a big, massive push through the grid, 
Charles could very well be in touching distance of getting a world championship victory here. If he comes out on top and Max has a less than stellar race, the swing could be huge and the momentum Charles might gain from Brazil and Las Vegas could be a big thing for him. Williams having a cracking day at the office as well. Third and fourth, by the way. Forgot to mention that. But yeah, I think Las Vegas has always been a good track for us. I don't know why. We've always seemed to do really well. Um, and again, Fio put in the two fastest laps in Q1 and Q2. And yeah, he's put in a good lap again in Q3. So Fio's clearly got pace here. So we might be in for a, a, another podium, I think. If we can stay out of trouble, that would also be nice. I'm not expecting much in Abu Dhabi because I think the car will probably be just hanging on by a thread by then. But again, another podium would be nice and, and trying to solidify that top three or top four finish would be a wonderful thing to see. Um, in terms of Aston Martin, both drivers are outside the top 10. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that and see how that develops. So here we go then. The race will start now. Theo in second, of course. Gasly in fifth. Two different strategies. We're going with a one-stop for Pierre, and we're going for a two-stop with Theo. So we'll see how that pans out. Of course, watching Gasly get in front of Giovinazzi there. So a strong start from Gasly. Theo's actually up into the first position as well on the softs. So a great start to the race. Can't really complain with that. So we've just started the second lap, and you can see... We've got about a half a second gap over Leclerc. I'm trying to push as much as we can these first few laps to try and get Theo as big a gap as possible before DRS opens up on the next lap. And to be fair, Gasly's still in fourth, holding back uh, Giovinazzi and chasing down Drogovic. Drogovic now a second back on Leclerc, so the top two very much in their own battle at the minute. And yeah, I, I mean, 50 laps at Las Vegas... It looks like we're in the fight at the minute. So the clerk gets the DRS and he gets in front of Porsche, but that's fine. We can do a lot with that because we can still sit in behind Leclerc and just use the DRS when we need to. Gazi now up into third after getting past Drogovic as well. So again, another double podium as things stand at the moment, but of course 47 laps to go. No guarantee that that's going to be the case by the end of the race. We need to do what we can to recharge the battery. As Fio goes ahead again of the clear on that long DRS straight. And the clear's just past Porsche there. And the gap has opened up between the top two and third and fourth to almost three seconds. So, again, Theo, despite having a lower spec part on his uh, car, I can't remember if it was, I can't remember which specific part it was, but despite having issues, obviously, with that lower spec, it's still being competitive. And the other thing to take in consideration right now is Max is still in 19th. So... Well, Claire's going to get a big point swing if Max can't make it through the field. I mean, everybody is tightly packed together from third all the way down to 19th. So, again, if he starts making a couple of overtakes here or there, pit stops start to happen, you would imagine he's going to get back into the points by the end of the race. But early signs aren't looking great for Max, and I'm sure there'll be a bit of panic in the, in the Verstappen side of the Red Bull panic. So we're into lap 10 now, and as you can see, Porsche still fighting away with the Claire up front. Gasly now... Really doing a great job of defending his teammate, to be honest. And is, yes, he may be six seconds back on the top two at the minute. But I'm not too concerned by it because he's holding the rest of the pack back and giving Porsche a bit more time to play with when he does come in for the pit stop because we've still got a couple of laps to go um, until Theo comes in. Um, and again, the battle with Leclerc and Porsche continues to go on. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um but yeah, I can't really complain. Gasly is obviously got another 11 or so laps to go until his pit stop happens. And he's doing the job that I need him to do, um, which is holding up the rest of the pack, really. So we're up to lap 13 and we're pushing Theo now to come in for his pit stop. Going to put him on the hard tyres like we'd discussed earlier. 
And hopefully we get a clean pit stop from the guys and girls in the pit stop crew. And again, Gazi doing a fantastic job holding up the chasing pack. Verstappen, he's down in 17 still. He's not been able to pick his way through, which is surprising. But again, it's a massive DRS train you've got being headed by Gasly and Drogovic. And Norris now getting involved. So, again, I think what Gazi's been able to do can't be underestimated as we come into the pits now. And that will just give Leclerc a bit more time to run with. And we've gone a bit long on the pit stop. But again, we're still not going to come out too far behind the bottom of the pack. And Albon is down there on the mediums. So, again, Porsche can use a bit of aggression now. Try and heat the tyres up and start picking his way back through the pack. And we're about a lap or so since Porsche's pitted. And we've started pushing Gasly to try and deal with the Norris threat. And we've got that gap over a second and interestingly Gazi now with a bit of clear air in front of him is starting to close down on the clear so let's have a look at what the tyres can I mean we've used a little bit less tyre than the clear um, but obviously we're going to have to charge back up again on the ERS but again Gazi now starting to show that mid-race pace we've seen before from him and yeah it's all so far going to plan so far <laughs> so we've had the first pit stop from anybody else on the race Sargent's come in and he's gone on to hards Verstappen as you can see on the soft tyres up to 15th but really struggling to make any progress and a big gap between Russell and the top 7 has begun to form um, and yeah we've just got a few more laps till Gazi needs to come in and then he'll be coming in for his pit stop but Theo doing a good job here and is starting to is now reached the back pack so Again, need him to start picking through. And we'll be in a good position, I think. So a couple of pit stops starting to happen now. You've got Sonoda, Piastri, De Vries and Verstappen all coming in. Again, what's he gone on to? They've gone on to hard, so they're clearly going for a one-stop. And they've gone long on the softs, which is interesting. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out for them. But Theo up into 13th now. And yeah, once we get to 8th, it's going to be interesting because he's going to have a gap to close down. But like I say, Gasly is doing his end of the bargain. No harm at all. And he's up into second with two and a half seconds between him and Leclerc. And Fio now looking to go around the outside of Ocon. And he makes it stick and he goes back into the points. And he's going to overtake a few guys that are in coming into the pits now as well. So... He's making up positions quite freely here for you, and his tyres are looking good. So Gazi's coming for the pit stop now. Fio up into six after a couple more pit stops. And Gasly is going to be behind his teammate and in seventh. So, again, Fio making his way through the pack, doing a really good job of it as well. And now Gasly's got no more pit stops. He's going all the way to the end on the hards now. So let's see how it progresses from here. Almost halfway through. Fio moves back into the top three. Leclerc's pitting as well. And Joe goes into the lead. As Perez pits as well. And Fio will get out in front of Leclerc. Leclerc had a pit stop issue actually. Oh, that's really unfortunate timing for Red Bull to have a pit stop issue. He is still out in front of the two Williams drivers, though. So now Theo has got eight seconds in front of him to try and cut down on Joe. And to be fair, the way he's doing it, he's not going to take very long to do it, I don't think. So we're approaching the pit window again for Theo's second round of uh, pit stops. And he's still in first. He's got a three-second gap over Gasly. But Gasly's in a three-way battle at the moment between Stroll and Norris for the best of the rest in terms of second position. Leclerc is starting to make his way through as well. Um, and it is up into fifth. Verstappen up into eighth as well. So likely he's going to have points by the end of this race. And yeah, the real challenge now becomes if we can get Theo through the pack again on those mediums when he pits in a few laps time. 
And there's been a yellow flag. So there was a crash. So they are still Let's see the what happens here. Who was involved? So it's Joe and Hauger, I think it is. Ooh, bit of a clash there. Don't know if it'll affect us. So, again, we're going to bring Theo in for his medium stop. No full flag just yet. So, I'm going to get him to go on the attack and push as well. So, Theo comes in for his pit stop in his course. Going to lose out on first spot. But I think with the medium tyres going up against the hards towards the end of the race, I think we should be in a good spot to take advantage of it. So, let's see if he can come back through the pack again. And he just holds up the McLaren there of Ocon. And now he's got to try and hold off Ocon and Russell here as best he can. To try and not lose too much time. And Gaz is going to be in the fight with Stroll for the race win for all these last 17 laps. So we've got about 15 laps to go now. And Theo is struggling to get by uh, Ocon. At the moment, he's really not making up the pace that I thought he would early on in this stint. He's now got in front of him, but he's got three seconds to make up on Perez. On the other side of the garage, we've got Gasly taking on Stroll. And again, I'm not too panicked about this race at the moment because we've got 6% better tyre wear. We're not using as much tyre. And we're staying in front of him despite him have DRS in various sections of the track. So... Again, if Gazi can just keep this composure and keep us on the track, we should be at least having a podium. But I'm surprised that Porsche has not been able to make up any pace. That's, that is the surprising thing. And the other thing is, is Verstappen is now making his way through the pack and he's only a couple of places behind his teammate in the championship fight. So a big moment in the driver's championship standings here because if Verstappen can get in front of Leclerc by the end of this race... I think that's game, set, and match. And now into DRS we go behind Perez. We've made up a load of time on the Mexican Minister of Defence. But we go down the inside on the corner and we make it stick. So we move back into the points. And now the real challenge begins because we've got 8.8 .8 seconds to make up on Piastri in ninth. And only 10 laps or so to do it. So the two-stop strategy has unfortunately not quite worked out as I thought it might but Fio's shown good pace all weekend so it's not out of the realms of possibility he makes up a couple of places before the end of the race I think so we've got 10 laps to go and the championship race takes another twist Verstappen is now in front of Leclerc I don't know what the tyre balance is like I mean they're pretty similar to be fair only 5% difference between Leclerc and Verstappen but obviously if Verstappen does finish ahead of his teammate, I think that will be that will be it for the championship. In terms of our race, we're still hanging about with Stroll. Not too concerned with where we're at. Porsche is cutting down the time to Piastri by a couple of seconds. It's now Drogovic is chasing down. Um but still got the two Ferraris attached to him and can't get can't quite shake them off at the moment. And the battle continues to go backwards and forwards between Stroll and Gasly. But again, the battle continues to go backwards and forwards between the two championship rivals over at Red Bull. And Leclerc now 2.6 ahead. Porsche puts in a fastest lap there as he's closing down the time to Drogovic now to three and a half seconds. And yeah, we're in a, we're in a decent spot now. I can't really complain with where we're at. I think it's just unfortunate Porsche has had to do a two-stop really. I did consider doing a one-stop with him, but I just thought trying to cover off both, and I thought Gazzy's done a one-stop pretty well before, so with his experience, we'll go with that. And so far, it's turned out to be the case that Gazzy's been able to pull through. He's got about 6 or 7% more tyre wear to use towards the end of the race, and of course, when we get to the last couple of laps, that's when I'll start to push him and try and make up that usage of tyre and open up that gap between him and Stroll. So the position still remains the same in terms of our fight with Stroll. 
Backwards and forwards on the DRS. We keep going. Porsche is now just over a second behind Drogovic, so he's caught up to the Williams driver. And he might be able to make up a couple of places by the end of these next three laps, but we'll have to wait and see. Leclerc is now three places back on Verstappen, and I think the championship race is all but done for the Monegasque driver, unfortunately. And, uh, I mean, Verstappen's on 42%, so if he, he could start sinking back. If Leclerc can push, he might be able to get back in front of Max, but Sonoda ain't going to make it easy for him. And, yeah, we've got three laps to go now. And there's still a race win on the cards if we can pull it off. And with two laps to go, Porsche has got back up into ninth. And now he'll be thinking to himself, can we make a few more overtakes and get ourselves into maybe a top six or a top seven? So Gasly starts the final lap, seven tenths in front of Stroll. We've got the tyres pushing now. We're using that extra bit of tyre wear. Porsche also in a decent position in eighth. Verstappen trying to get in front of Norris, but not quite working out. And yeah, we're now a second and a half in front of Strolls, so I think that is job done now for Gasly. Question now becomes, where does Pio Fio get? in front. Can he get in front of Giovinazzi by the end of this straight? He does. And he's going to be ended up just behind the clay. And we finish in first with Gasly. And Fio gets up to seventh. There we go. What a result. And there we go. Pierre makes the one-stop work. And what a fantastic result it is for the team. It's another race win. Again, we've been when we've got it right, we get it right. And it's just the challenge in 2028 is going to be trying to get it right once every three races and trying to be on the podium so much more consistently. Cut out the mistakes. And hopefully with the upgrades we've made in the factory, we'll be able to get more out of the car upgrades and be there more consistently. And Fio gets seven points and we get 25 from Gasly. Drivers-wise, the gap is, is that 23 points. So it's still theoretical that Charles can make that up, but Max has to finish in like 10th or lower. And Charles has to win the race to overcome that, that deficit. Constructors-wise... Well, we are pretty much, con we are confirmed, I think, almost being in third position unless Mercedes have an absolute stonker of a race. Um, we might be able to nick second here as well, which would be some quite something really considering the season we've had in the middle of the year. But yeah, what a fantastic drive from Gasly and fingers crossed we can take it into Abu Dhabi. So let's head into the week in between and see what we can do so we've got a few more research projects done um again they'll be the last research projects we do for the year because we literally have no budget left and obviously cost cap wise we have gone over so there is no money to spend cars wise chassis has failed and we have we don't have a chassis to replace it with um so we are going to have to give Fio the worse a car part again. Oh, and we've got no front wing either. We can get... Oh, can we get two done? No, it's... We're, we'll get a normal one done and get that put on and then it won't... Hopefully shouldn't hurt him too much. Side pods wise, we've got one spare. So it's just the front wing that needs replacing. So nothing to really report at this point. Nothing other than the front wings now on Pierre's car. So again, we're not going to be too much over the cost cap. I think if you look at what we've got left, obviously we've got zero left, but we're going to just just over a million. Just over a million. I think really considering how many crashes we had and how many components we had to replace. Two engines. 
that's 10 million in itself. So without that, we would have been well under the cost cap, I think. So yeah, it's just, it is what it is. Um, and yeah, let's see if we can get a nine point swing over Alpine and get to second position in what would be a hell of an unlikely result. And again, despite another uh, weekend where I didn't have high expectations, we are punching above our weight here. And we're first and fourth. And Joe and Sonoda are down in eighth and tenth. So, of course, if we have anything remotely close to this and we have a couple of top five finishes, we could be finishing the second, which would just be incredible, really. Um, and we have had a great end to the season. Like, a couple of race wins, podiums galore. It's just been a fantastic end to the season. And I, I really didn't expect it. So here we go then, folks. The final race of the season. Gasly starting in first, Theo in fourth. Who knows what can happen. I suspect the Red Bulls will be too strong and will get in front. But of course, there seems to be pace in the car that I didn't expect us to have. So, yeah, let's see what we can do and, and see if we can fight a good race. Um, again, the main objective, stay in front of Alpine. Make, make sure there's a point swing with Alpine and... And try and get that second place if we can. Because um, again, Alpine have looked really quick all season. And not just quick, consistent. And if if not for the lack of consistency in that big chunk of season where we were in and out of the points, I think, you know, I don't. we wouldn't have won the Constructors. There's no way. We wouldn't have won the Drivers or anything like that. But I don't think the gap would be over 500 points to Red Bull. Um, but again, it's it's been a really good season overall. Can't complain with how it's gone. And yeah, just got to try and make the most of these early laps and, and keep ourselves in the top four and, and see how it develops. Because again, no real big names out of place, I would say. I mean, Stroll's in the top six and he'll probably be fighting us for those positions again. So yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens um, as we get to the end of this second lap. Relatively unscathed. So the first overtake has now happened and Leclerc's got himself in front of Gasly on that long DRS straight. And now it's just a case of we need to try and hang with Leclerc whilst he's uh, trying to increase that second... or that gap to over a second, I should say. But we keep ourselves in DRS... And Verstappen's in third, so the championship is staying with Max and has only ever been with Max during the course of this career mode. And we go down the inside there of Leclerc after the DRS is opened up. And we go back into first place. So, again, much like we did in Vegas, the top two of Gasly and Leclerc, I know it was Theo last time, but Gasly and Leclerc are struggling... Well, not struggling, uh, uh, fighting amongst themselves and trying to open up a gap between them and Verstappen um, and the chasing pack. Theo was just over a second behind on Verstappen, but might just get into DRS here. And he does. And so that use of VRS was very much appreciated, I feel, on Theo's side of the garage. And we're up to lap 11. And Sonoda has fought his way through the pack a little bit and has now got himself in front of Theo. So the medium tyres clearly starting to kick in and the soft tyres starting to wane off a little bit. Um, so, of course, it's vitally important in terms of being able to even think about getting that top two in the constructors that we've got to hang with Sonoda as long as we can before Theo comes in around lap 19. Gazi's now got a few laps to go until his first pit stop. And then, of course, much like it was in Vegas, we'll have to pick our way through the pack on those fresh hards. And we've managed to get Theo back in front of Sonoda in lap 13. Again, DRS being as effective as it has been for us. Bit of ERS deployed, and we get back in front of Yuki. And we're going to be bringing Gazi in the next lap or so as well. So we'll have to watch this space to see if we can uh, stick with Leclerc. We're going to bring him in now because that gap's just starting to open up over a second. And I wanted to push this last lap to get back into that second gap. 
But he's going to just be outside it. And he's going to be in danger of getting overtaken by Verstappen here with the two DRS sections being close together. But there isn't quite the pace on Max's car to get there. And we might have DRS here now. And we do. So Gaz is going to come in. He's going to be pretty close to the bottom, I would imagine. By the time he comes out. But we should be in a good position to pick our way back through. And a yellow flag gets waved. In sector three. Who's involved? So it's Sergeant and De Vries. And what a place to do it on. That final sort of chicane heading into the last couple of corners. Gazi now comes in for his pit stop. And we're having trouble with the back right. Oh, that is horrific. Almost 10 seconds pit stop time. Oh no! God! No! God, please, no! 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 So we are going to be at the back. We would have been in the middle of the pack if we hadn't had that. And that might be the top two in the constructors sayonara unfortunately so a couple of pit stops have happened there Sonoda and Sainz both coming in for pits and Sonoda on the hard tyres so basically copying our strategy at the moment we're only a couple of places back and a few seconds back on him so we might be able to get in touch with him again but has that 10 second pit stop done the damage we'll have to wait and see because Fio's got a couple more laps to go until he pits Although we might bring him in now, actually. Just get him on the tyres at the end of this lap. And there's been a crash in Sector 3. I don't know who it involves. It's Joe and Giovinazzi. That's a little bit of a tap. Sent Joe spinning off. So Joe will have dropped down a few places, I imagine. And that helps us in terms of our battle with Joe and Giovinazzi. Uh, Giovinazzi, Joe and Porsche. Porsche comes in now for his pit stop to go onto the hard tyres. And this second stint is really the most important one of our race to see where we end up. And it's, and it's another poor pit stop. It's over 10 seconds. 13 second pit stop. What are we doing? That is awful. So despite that awful pit stop, he's still going to be in front of some of the back markers. So it's going to, we're not making it easy for ourselves. That much is for certain. So we're up to that 21 and Gasly after a couple of pit stops, some guys in front. Has got up into ninth and he's just overtaking Schumacher as well. Theo fighting still down in 14th. I, I still can't get my head around. We've had a grand total of about 23 seconds of pit stop time after two pit stops. It's impressive in all the worst ways. And to make matters worse for us, Sonoda is the fastest man on the track. Putting the fastest lap in on those hard tyres. And we're just trying to find a way past the McLarens. And the guy's in front. And we do that within the next couple of corners, thankfully. So now we have to focus on trying to cut down this almost five-second gap to Drogovic and Court and get ourselves back into the fight for the top four paces. So Joe comes in for a pit stop now on lap 25. And we move up into the top four. Six seconds back on the top three. Trying to make up time as much as we can without pushing too hard. Still got 15 laps to go on these tyres. And still lots of work to do. Fio into the top ten now as well. So hopefully he can make up some good points for us. And I'm assuming Joe is going to try and do a, a one-stop here. Which would be very interesting. Car. And the car has gone off here. Crashed on turn 16 has Sergio Perez. Down in 17th. So it comes off the final corner. 
and goes into the... I mean, it's a slight tap into Barry. It's not a massive crash, but I don't think that'll be a safety car because he'll be able to get going again. Gaps opened up to about seven and a half seconds between us and Sonoda. And we've still got about 10 or so laps to go before we go on to mediums. Um, and yeah, Fio's in the fight for the top seven again. Um, whether he gets much higher, I don't know. But again, it's about whether or not we keep in front. We can keep if we can keep it, this position to Sonoda and then keep a few places in front in front of Joe, we might be able to still get that swing of points. But it's going to be awfully tight, one way or another, I think. And the frustrating thing is, as I'm looking at the race now, and we're 25 laps from the end. Almost 10 seconds back on Verstappen. It's like if we hadn't had that pit stop issue with either driver, we'd probably be getting top two in terms of the constructors. And that's that's the most frustrating thing. And we've got another pit stop to go, so it could get worse before the race even finishes. So who knows if it's going to be as good as we need it to be. But... Yeah, we've just got to keep chipping away. We've got about 24 laps to go. And still, podium is still at play here. Um, Joe's down in 13th at the minute. So, as things stand, I don't think we'd get the point swing. But again, a lot can happen. Safety cars can kick in. Red flags can kick in. It's unlikely at Abu Dhabi that we'd get a full red flag. But, of course, we'd have a decision to make then if we did get a full red flag. Because... We'd probably have to pit stop again before the end of the race. So, yeah, we've, uh, we've just got to keep chipping away, see what we can do, manage things as best we can, and, and see if someone up front makes a mistake. So we're up to lap 40 now, and it's now pit stop time for our guys. And guys is going to be coming in first. Again, just trying to manage this as best we can, and... You know, it's a 10 second gap to the podium spot, so I don't think we're gonna we're gonna get on the podium. But Joe's in 10th, so our aim's to try and get back in front of him and just try as high, finish as high up in the positions as we can, as it's a 3.9 second pit stop, and what I wouldn't have given to have that again. Um, and Gazi comes out in 10th, and Fio's gonna be coming in for his pit stop next. So let's see what happens on his side of the garage. So Porsche and Stroll both coming into the pits now. And it's a 3.7. Doesn't quite get us in front of Stroll, but it keeps us in touch and distance to the point still. And now if Gasly's going to do anything here, he's going to have to make a serious charge through the pack. Although I suspect, actually looking at tyre wear, so Norda's going to have to pit again. He's doing that right now. Oh, he's too far ahead, though. I suspect the other guys in front of us will pit as well. Joe might push his luck to the end. Still a long way to go, though. So much can happen between now and the end of the race. But it just shows you how big a gap the top three had over the rest of the pack when they are... Uh, there's 14 seconds between Sonoda and the two Red Bulls. So we're coming down the DRS straight now. Ferrari and Mercedes in front. And we're looking to try and make a double overtake. And we get into the next DRS section. Loss of DRS, but we keep our noses in front. So Gasly making his charge up the pack. And is now just over a second behind Joe. So is there enough time and enough tyre wear in the tyres to get Gasly up into some good points here? He's within a second now. Verstappen's coming out of the pits. And Verstappen's going to be on soft, surely. Yeah, he is. Sonoda will be on softs as well, I imagine. Yeah. So, top four might be our best hope here. As we look to go in front of Joe now on the DRS straight. Medium tyres against hards. And we get in front. There's six seconds now between us and Norris. And Norris has spun out. Norris is tumbling down the order. So, he's locked up on turn 12. And that puts us into the top four. But if we are going to make a point swing, we need something to happen to Joe here. I mean, signs should catch up to Joe. I mean, he's already on him, practically. 
we need to make up a few positions here with Paul Sheriff. We're going to get a point swing that we need. We need, I mean, is the player going to make up seven seconds on Sonoda? I don't know. Again, if those pit stops haven't been so bad, we probably would have been in a decent position. So we've got 10 laps to go. Fio's made up a couple of positions, just getting in front of Russell there. And gets up into eighth. Again, DRS straight, really coming to strengths in the car. Very much being shown there. And we get up into eighth. Gasly still in fourth. Three seconds ahead of signs now. Sonoda only four seconds ahead of Leclerc. So Leclerc pushing to try and get himself back in touch with the Japanese driver. And yeah, we're just sort of in no man's land with Gasly trying to get him through to the end of the race. And now we're trying to cut down the gap between Porsche and Stroll as well as Joe. Stroll's on Joe now with the soft tyre. I just think Joe, Joe might fall away, you know. He's on 48% and he's got eight laps to go. And there's plenty of drivers on quicker tyres around him. So, all might not be lost. And so, about five laps to go. We're cutting down the time with Fio to Joe to under two seconds. Six second gap between Gasly and Sainz. 12 and a half, unfortunately, though, to the top three. Leclerc is trying his damnedest to get close to Sonoda, but he's still three seconds back. So Alpine have just showed up at the right time, I think, to keep themselves in second position. But again, I think with the way the cars are, using lower specs on Fio's car, the engine's not being necessarily tip-top shape, I think we've done quite well to be, you know, not... In with a chance of podium, but we put in some good quality laps. We've put in good consistent times, and yeah, we move up into seventh now, and we get in front of Joe. Can we get up into the top six or top five? Only time will tell. So we've got two laps left, and we're just under a second now behind Signs and Stroll. So Porsche are doing his best to try and get up to these guys. And be within touching distance. Do we get DRS? We do. So that should shrink down the time a little bit. Although Joe's coming back at us. And again, just want to try and give us the best opportunity in this final lap to get up to Stroll and Signs and get in front of at least one of them. So here we go then. Final lap of the season begins. Joe is back in contention. And again, I think the boys have run a good race. I think the pit stops have, are what let us down, really. I'm trying to go on the attack here for this final lap to try and make up a position or two into the DRS straight, but we're too far back. We'll get ourselves into DRS for the, the last stint. And it's now over to this one. Can we get in front of Stroll? More signs. No, too far back. Too far back, unfortunately. Despite despite the pit stops. And Alpine won a, won a race out of nowhere, really. Um, yeah, they came out of nowhere and won that. That was a fantastic result for them. And to be fair, it's a good result for us. Fourth and seventh, can't really complain at that. And yeah. Continues a, a strong end to the season, really. And there you go. Confirmation of Max winning as well. Title number seven. That is crazy. And he wins it by 20 points in the end. He got pushed by Russell last year and he got pushed by Charles this year. So who knows how long this run can go on. If he gets another one, he breaks the record. Or he gets the record outright, I should say. He's now tied with Schumacher and Hamilton on seven. So, and that's another 4 million in the pot for us. So, there you go then. Confirmation of the Constructors' result. Missing out by about 29 points in the end. And getting third comfortably um, over Mercedes. And again, Aston Martin only three points back on Mercedes there. So, that show you how much they fell off by the end of the season. We've got 22 million in the bank. 
Car inspection, we passed that with flying colours. And now everything is locked down, heading into the next season. So let's have a look at the facilities. We'd have more engineers if we do put in a new design centre. But I think we should hold off on that one. Is there anywhere else we can maybe improve race simulator? Put that in. Operations facility. Upgrade the weather facility. Upgrade the boardroom. Do all the obvious things, I think. And there we go. So there we go, then. That is the end of the 2027 season. Low morale overall. Still got people secured until next year for contracts. Driver changes. Nothing happening there. So, we've made a very bold decision to replace Fio. And we're going to bring in Lando Norris. Lando's a 93 rated driver, so he's an improvement on Gasly as well. Um, so, yeah. We're going to take Lando in. It's going to cost us a bit of change. So we do go down to 9 million in budget, but it just makes all the sense in the world to strengthen up where we can. I think with what we've learned so far in the game and what we've learned so far in the career mode and with the facility upgrades we're making, there's no reason we can't make a push for consistent podiums and consistent and, and maybe, just maybe, consistent wins. So here we go then, folks. It's the board review. We get 3 million for finishing 8th. It's an astonishment that we finished 8th with some of the mistakes our pit crews made. Um, but we get high confidence from the board. We get 5th for Gasly, 8th for Fio. 3rd with 332 points. Team rating goes up to 4 stars again. And again, we hit that podium objective. And our Constructors team rating goes up to above 600. Team principal is almost 700. And there we go. Another million and a half in the pot as well. Cost cap goes back up. Another 5 million. And there we go. All the, all the season preparations are going to be getting underway. And yeah, it's um, it's going to be an interesting time. Um, our target for next season is going to be top three again. And I think that's what we should be aiming for, really, um, on a consistent basis now. With the driver lineup we've got, I think that's where we should be heading. So there we go then, folks. That will be it for the 2027 season. We've got everything underway to start the 2028 season. The facilities are upgraded in terms of the CFD simulator. We've got a temporary shutdown for the design center. Factory is almost complete. And the project capacity goes up to four as well once it's upgraded. So, again, I think we're in a really good spot heading into 2028. And, yeah, that is going to be it for the save on YouTube. Um, again, thank you to anybody that's watched it this far. I mean, we're into the beginning of 2028. And a lot of you are still watching at this point. So... Thank you if you've been around since the very beginning um, when we were originally Alfa Romeo and obviously transformed into Audi. I can't put into words the fact that we've managed to do so many videos on this series and enjoyed it from the first to this point. It really is appreciated that people have watched and commented and got involved in the series as much as they have. Um, of course, we'll be back for F1 Manager 2024 when that comes out on the 23rd of July just a month away now um but what i will say is i don't want the save to finish here with audi so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to put this save up on twitch so what i'm gonna do is to try and give us at least one more season before the new f1 manager game comes out is i'm gonna stream it on twitch and then if i can get the recordings right put those streams up onto YouTube as well. So those videos are obviously going to be a lot longer because obviously streams can go on for a few hours at a time and I'm hopefully going to do at least a couple of races a stream. But I think it's only right that we try and finish this save as many seasons as possible. 
So I hope you'll join me on Twitch for that. Um, of course, I'll give a notification on YouTube, on, on obviously on the community page, when that is going to happen. Um, so if you want to follow me on Twitch, it's the same name on Twitch, at St. Grimmy. Um, and yeah, we'd love to have you over there as well. But if you don't want to watch it on Twitch and you just want to watch like maybe a compressed, edited down version of the stream, then keep your eyes peeled on the channel because we'll have that there for you ready to go when it's live and ready. So yeah, whilst it's the end of like the sort of weekly uploads, it's not the end of the save. There will be more uploads. It just might be a bit more sporadic. But again, the streams will be there over on Twitch for you to see everything in full of its glory. So as always, guys, if you have enjoyed this and you want to see more F1 Manager content in the future when 2024 comes out, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you out on the track.